Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today we have launched a, a new little hunt for kids. Um, Japanese sum Sudoku at a quite basic level. Do give it a try. Either if you like your Sudoku just a bit on the easier side, or if you want to introduce your kids to Sudoku and some of the variants. Um, it's by, obviously, I guess, the Paint by Numbers Institute, Panthera and the Asylum. And it's really nice for very, very approachable Sudokus um, and a little rebus puzzle to finish off with. There's no prizes, it's just for fun. But if you're with us on Patreon, you can do that and then you can immediately move on to uh, the Jewels of Osiris, um, the novella by... Um, Demono, fantastic Sudoku hunt, great fun, super characters in the story. Uh, one of them is a particular favourite of mine, and uh, it's all good fun. Do check it out on Patreon. Later in the week, I'll be putting up my crossword solve for the month, the uh, Times Monthly Club special. Um, always trying to keep the crossword content going. And what else have we got? We've got all our apps. Um, yeah, this puzzle I'm going to do today, you're going to have to read the rules if you've just jumped straight to it and missed this introduction. I will get to the introduction, but the apps feature um, Domino Sudoku, so that will be familiar, or rather the X's in this will be familiar to those who've had a go at the app. And uh, the diagonal constraint does appear on some puzzles too, but there's a very interesting... Um, a very interesting rule about fives in this. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm just going to quickly throw in mention of our catalogue, the Discord server, um, how to get to Patreon. It's all in the links under the description, in the description field, as is how to get Sven's Sudoku pad and um, the first, and merchandise. But the first link is to this puzzle, which is called Prey by Fry, whose debut it is on the channel. Well done, Fry. Um, I assume it's called Prey. Maybe it's Pre-Y because the Y is capitalized at the end. I don't know. Um, anyway, I am looking forward to having a go at this in this corner of the internet. Um, we don't normally chase after prey. We are just solving Sudoku one puzzle at a time to make the world a fractionally better, better place. And that's what we try and do. So um, the rules then, the rules of this. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to be putting one to nine in every row column and three by three box, I guess. Cells joined by an X sum to 10. Well, that's a familiar rule. A marked diagonal has no repeat digits, and there are two of those. So that's fairly familiar. This has to be a set of one to nine. Now, here we go with the funky stuff. Every cell on the marked diagonals points orthogonally outwards in every direction at a distance of X where X is equal to the digit in the cell. Cells stop pointing in their respective direction if they cross over a marked diagonal. For example, if row 4, column 4 was a 3, it would only point to the cells row 1, column 4 and row 4, column 1. But if this diagonal, oops, that diagonal, you know the one I mean, wasn't there, it would also be pointing to those cells. So if this was a 1, um, I guess it would instead be pointing at all of these cells. Now, who cares about the pointing, you're wondering? And the last line of the last line of the instructions cares. Every five is being pointed at, which is a very weird rule, but it explains why we care about this pointing. I mean, you could say in every puzzle, every cell on the diagonal is pointing out X cells away. Um, anyway, that means, I guess, that, for instance, if you had a 5 here, you might have a 2 here, and that 2 would be pointing at that 5. So that's how the rules work. It's really strange to me. Well, no, OK, I, I can imagine just a puzzle with this setup that worked without that rule, but it's, it's very few X clues. And actually, you'd never disambiguate the different numbers in the puzzle. So, no, that wouldn't work. But I'm intrigued that this comes with no given digits. That's quite a feat by Fry, I suspect. Um, and we'll see how it solves. No idea. No idea how this is going to play. You can look at the video length, but in the last week or two, that has sometimes been a very poor judge of how hard a puzzle is. But I am going to get cracking now. 
let's get cracking. So, the trouble is I'm looking at this empty grid and going, what the heck can you possibly put in? I mean, there's nothing, okay. I could highlight the cells where fives can be in some, ah, in some, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna highlight the whole grid in yellow and then I'm gonna deduct cells where, or I'm gonna remove the coloring from cells where five cannot be. And in the first instance, that is just cells which touch an X. And they can't have a five in because the cell they would X up with would be another five, and that would be in the same row or column and break Sudoku rules. Yes, okay, look. Look what's happening in the central box. Where is five here? It's in one of these three yellow cells, and that's on this negative diagonal. And that means the other cells on the negative diagonal do not have five in, so I can unyellow them. And now look at what's happened to box nine down here. There's only one yellow cell in it, so that becomes the five. Let's make it purple instead. And that means that all of these cells at C can't be yellow. And look what's happened, this is beautiful. Look what's happened to box three. There's only one yellow cell in it. So I am identifying fives. I'm not using the rule in any way at all. I haven't touched the rule. I'm just finding fives based on the diagonals and the X's. That is clever. Um, now there's got to be one here in box six. What next? There's definitely one on the diagonal. On that diagonal, ah, on this diagonal, it's in one of those two positions. Okay, that tells me an interesting thing. Well, I don't, yes it, ah, uh, it does. Okay, if there is, a, there has to be a five in one of those two cells. Now the interesting thing that I think that tells me, or the thing that I think is interesting that that tells me, let me put it that way, is that these two cells can't be a five because we know there must be a five in one of those two and therefore these cells see both of those. So I can unyellow those. Now it's getting interesting in row five where there's only two cells. And I could try the same trick again and say, if there's a five in one of those two, then neither of these can have a five. But unfortunately, that doesn't actually help. And I'm a bit stuck now. I, I, this was going well. I suppose I'm going to have to think about the blinking rule, aren't I? So, okay, I can actually write fives into these cells because they're, they're, they're known fives. I might as well do the pencil marking in these ones as well. Within their box, that's where five must be. That's why we put it in the corner. It's called Snyder notation. Um, now, right, this five has to be seen from one of these diagonals. So it must be from one of these three cells. It can't be seen across a diagonal, so we're not including that. So one of these has a two in it, and that would say where eight was in the box, or this one has a six in it. I don't know, that's... This one has a one in one of those two, or a six in that one. No, no, I miscounted, and I miscounted importantly. Oh, that, right, I've got something now, right, okay, there is not, sorry, the count from there to there, that is six cells, but this is actually one, two, three, four, five away. So if that was pointing at that cell, it would be a five. So it's not, because obviously you can't have two fives in a row. So one of these is a one, now, what I've noticed in this box is there are three X's and a five. Now, what I know about every digit that's not a five is there's another Sudoku digit it can pair up with to make 10. So if none of these are one nine, because one is in one of those two cells, then none of them have a nine on, and therefore nine is in one of these two cells, and that is a one nine pair. 
and that almost feels like it might be helpful. Oh, and I mean, I guess whichever, whichever one of those is a one is the one seeing this five now. It hasn't affected the cells for here for this five at all. Ah. Right, I haven't had this thought yet, but this is an important thought, I suspect. Where does five go? Well, we know, we know that each diagonal has a set of the digits one to five. What is the implication for the five on that diagonal? I think the specific case, well, there is either a five in one of those two. Now, if there's a five here, what number is seeing it? Well, it's going to have to be an 8 in one of those two ends of the diagonal. Now, that's possible. But if there was a 5 here, and this is the one that isn't possible, where would it be seen from? Where would it be pointed at? And none of these cells in its orthogonal and vertical ambit um, have a diagonal on. So that can't be a 5. That is not yellow. And now in this row, we know where 5 is. It's right here. Uh, I hope that does more. Yes, it does more. It does more. It takes, um, it takes that cell off the diagonal. And on the, di on the positive diagonal, this has become the purple cell where 5 goes. Now that sees quite a lot of other cells. So they are no longer yellow. And now we have a five in one of those two cells. We, it's definite five here in the corner. Um, ah, one of these two is a five in box one now. I think this coloring has worked incredibly well. Those don't become, those can't be fives. There is a five in one of those two. Um, yeah, I'll bother. Now I'm going to have to do more work on thinking about the numbers. Bother. No, I'm not actually. There's an X-wing, isn't there? There and there in boxes two and eight. So five in row two is in one of those cells. Five in row seven is in one of those cells. And that means that's going to use up the two fives in columns five and six. And that can't be a five. And that is going to give me the five on the diagonal or in box five. On this other diagonal, that's there. Those aren't yellow. That one goes purple and becomes a five. It sorts out this. We're going to finish off the fives or are we not? I'm afraid, sir, we are not. We've got seven of the fives in the grid. And then I don't think we can do those except... Well, presumably that's going to get sorted out by reference to the pointing at business. Now, we said with a 5 there, one of these corners is an 8. That's how that is getting pointed at. And I'm prepared sometimes to pencil mark across boxes where I think I can keep track of what's going on. and We'll see if I can. Oh, this is a really interesting puzzle at this stage, actually. Um, We've got five on both diagonals, yeah, okay. So, well, I've, this, this is a pair that adds up to 10. Because again, in this box, we've got three pairs that add up to 10 and the fourth pair must be sitting in that. So there's no X written there, but I still know there could be. In this central box, there's one pair there and one pair there. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean this is a 10 pair. Because although they could be a 10 pair, if all these were from the same 10 pair, they don't have to be. Oh, this five. Right, let's, let's start analysing these fives. This one is either seen by a 1 in one of those cells or a 7 there. Let's forget these because they're variable. This one in row 3 is either a 2 in one of those or a six there. I don't think I can sort those out. This one, this is, this is a good one. This one that has to be seen from one of these two cells by a two. And that not only fixes two within the box, but also on the diagonal. And in the box, it means eight is sitting on an X with a two in one of those cells. 
not that helpful because we knew 8 was on this diagonal in one of those positions, so it could never have been there either. Um, let's keep analyzing this 5. This is interesting. This needs a 3 in one of those positions. Well, and it can't be there where we've got a 1, 9 mark. So, there's a 3 in one of those two. And I know, well, and that, ooh, I don't know, it's going to keep 3 off the diagonal. Okay, I don't quite know what to do with that yet. Let's have a look at this one. This either needs a 3 here or a 1 in one of those cells. And all of those look very possible. So, oh, this one's already dead. It's been shot by one of those. So let's colour it red because it's dead. And in fact, yes, I said we weren't solving murders. We're going to pick off these murders one at a time. This one's being done by one of these 8s. Now, yes, let's go back to this one. This is brilliant. Look, there's a 2 in one of those cells. So this one now cannot be got by a 2 on the same diagonal. So this one is getting shot from here. And that is not an 8. That is a 6. Uh, so that goes red. It's been shot by the 6. Now we know where 8 is on this long dia on this uh, negative diagonal, it's up there. That's shooting 5 in the corner, so that goes red. Now, this one has lost one of its possible cells. Um, and we've either got a 1 there or a 7 there. Now let's go back to this, this is getting a 2. This one needs a 3 in one of those two. Oh bother, I'm running out of... This one hasn't really changed. Either a 3 there, and we can... Oh, let's look at the diagonal, actually. 1, 9, 6, 5, 8. 2 has to be in one of those cells, because it can't be on the diagonal here. And these are from 3, 4, or 7. But this can still be a 3. That's the point with regards to this. So it doesn't it mean it means that I can't rely on there being a one in one of those cells. Oh, what's going on? I'm gonna have to look at these, aren't I? Bother. The trouble is if there's a three there, that makes that one fine. If that's a five, we need either a two here or a two here, which is impossible, or a four here, which is possible. So these aren't helping. This one, ah, yes, of course. This is impossible, this cell, because it's two away from all of those sniper points. Um, and none of those can be a two, because two on this diagonal is in one of those cells, so those two can't be a two. So that is not a possible cell for a five, therefore that isn't. We've found the last two prey cells. Those are fives. Um, they're purple. Well, okay, the fact that there's a 3 in one of those two positions, as long as I remember what that means and to apply it, that means that these can both go red, because they get got by whichever one of those is a 3. Sorry about that hideous get got phrase. Now this one is being got by a 2 in one of those positions, so that might as well go red. This one needs either a 1 here, or here, or a 3 here. This one. Oh, this can't be a 1. It's on a diagonal with a 1 on it somewhere. Right, so that is getting shot from here. And that's a 7. Oops, sorry. 7 there. This goes red. We've only got 2 left to identify the killers. Now, oh lovely, 7 on the X gives us 3. Now we know where 3 is on the diagonal. It's in the centre. Um, and that three is shooting both of those fives. Um, now, seven on the diagonal. Right, oh yes, this can't be a three. So that's not what's killing this five. One of these is a one. Well, I can't suddenly be afraid of pencil marking diagonals now. Ah, hang on, this gets shot by either a 1 there or there, or a 3 here. Well, this can't be a 3 on the diagonal. That clearly is not 
a candidate for a one. So this is a one. That is dead. And now this needs a one in one of those positions and we know exactly where it is. And we have identified the marksman killing all the fives. Sorry, maybe I've gone a bit too... Uh, a bit too gory with my metaphors today, but it's been quite useful in a, as a way of thinking about it. So those are from 247, one of them is a two. And we've, we've basically used the special rule entirely. All those fives have gone red. So, ah, that one says this is a nine. It tells us where the two eight on the X is. These are from four, six, seven. Oh, neither of those can be a seven because they would put a three in this cell. Oh, take extra brownie points if you worked out early on that that had to be a 10 partner of that cell because of its relationship with those two cells, which I did not work out, but I've seen it now. So that's a seven. These always had to be from the same 10 partnership for that reason, which I hadn't understood. And now we can see in a way that even I can understand that they're both from 4-6. Uh, now, on this diagonal, we've got 5, 1, 3, 2, 7. We've got 4, 6, 8, and 9 to place. Let's hope the X's help us. Oh, there's a 4 there on this X. Now, that means this can't be 4 or 6. That can't be 4 or 6. This is 1 or 2. This one, not sure. Let's look at this one. This can't be a 9 because that can't be one. This one, it sees nine and four. So that's six or eight. Oh, we've got the seven here. So this is a two, four pair on the negative diagonal. Don't think they're resolved. Um, one of these is a nine because nine can't be here or here. So, one of those is a 9, and one of these on the X's is a 1. Oh, this is a pair as well. I did keep saying that. It's not 3, 7, or 1, 9. So they're both even. Oh, this is really interesting, but I don't think I'm doing brilliantly at it. I thought I'd be finishing off the diagonals. These are a 2, 8 and a 7, 3 pair. Oh, 3 is in one of those cells because of this 3. So 7 is on the X, on the inside. 7 is going to end up in one of those two cells in column 7. What's ruled out up here? Something is, isn't it? What am I missing? That can't be an 8. 8, 5, 1, 3, 2, 5, 7, 4, 6, 8, 9. Is there some diagonal trick to play? Look, 4. Yes, there is. 4 is on one of those two cells on the diagonal. And they're both looking at that, so that's a 2. I like it. So that's a 4. This now can't be a 2, 8 pair. Is that all it's done? Bother. Um, by Sudoku, this is 1, 2, 7, or 9. But it can't be 1 or 9, because that can't be 1 or 9. So we've got a 2 or a 7 there. Now, come on, maybe I should keep thinking about this. But 6 is in 3 possible cells here, and 8 also in 3. Hmm, I'm sure this is all resolved. Have I, u have I finished with all the fives? Have I put all the killers in? I think I have. That had a seven. That had a three. This had a six down here shooting it. This one had a two. This one had a three. This one had a one. This one, which I never colored apparently, had a one. That one had a one. This one had an eight. I have. Okay, they were all done. Bother. Waste of time there. Three, nine, four, six, five. That's one or two. Um, oh, this is an eight, seven pair. Now that's interesting. This is an eight, seven pair because eight, seven can't be in any of those cells. 
So that's an 8, 7 pair, but this can't be an 8 because that can't be a 2. That's how we make more progress. Oh, and then we suddenly accidentally colour everything because I'm in the wrong mode. Right, there we go. That's better. Um, oh, that's an, this can't be a 4. It hasn't resolved everything like I thought it was going to. Again, 3, 2, that 2. Ah. Oh. Cruel. Um, the four. Does that four pair see anything else that I didn't notice? Not sure. Oh, every time you think you're breaking through in this, it holds you back. Seven and three. What about two and eight? <laughs> there must be something still to do. Something easy to see. I bet there is. There's a 2 in one of those two cells by Sudoku. So that's not a 2. This is down to 4 or 6. That's really useful. That means this isn't a 4-6 pair. Wow. Okay, lovely. 9, 1, 8, 2. Now we've got 9 and 8 on the diagonal. We can finish it off. 6, 4, 6 there. Brilliant. This is a 6. That's a 4. 1 and 9 to place in row 2. That's a 7-6 pair, we know the order. So row 3 is suddenly completely complete to uh, use an utter tautology. That 6 has given me 4 and 6, as they did as well. Didn't notice them. That 7 makes this a 2-8x. Now the remaining x's are here. So there's an 8 in one of those cells and a 2 in one of those. That's a 297 pair, or triple, five, 381, I can fill in 4 and 6. That's a 4 by Sudoku, 2 and 3. How am I doing on 4s and 6s? I've got one more 6 to put in to finish them off. 4s, one more 4 to put in to finish them off. There we go. I felt they were going well. That's become an 8. That finishes box 9. I think we are tidying up now, which is lovely. What an, what an elegant idea this was. Well done, Fry. Uh, that's 1 or 9 as well, which forms a pair in the column. 2, 3 and 7 to place. I can place the 2. How am I doing on 2's? Little X-wing left. Um, that is the 1 in this column. So that's a 9. And I can do 1 there, not 0, 9 there. That's a 9, that's a 1, that's a 9. Everything's getting sorted out now. This is a 137 triple that is not yet sorted out. That's a naked 7. 9 and 3 there. That does this triple. Got one cell in that column to finish off. 8 and 7 here. 3 and 8. Up at the top it looks like a 2-1 pair. And then back down at the bottom, 2 and 9. And there we go, I think that's the answer. Looks good as far as I can tell. Puzzle doesn't include solution. Oh, surprising. Okay. Um, but there we go. That does happen sometimes. And that is Prey by Fry. And it's a very clever puzzle. Um, and we have identified the killers of all of these fives, which was the whole point. Excellent puzzle. Thank you, Fry. Um, and thank you for watching us, as always. It's a great pleasure to share your company. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.